All right. So we were just having a conversation about what you would like to do and your future plans are to possibly buy and hold maybe a multifamily so that you can get some passive income. And for now, you would like to wholesale some property so that you can get the cash up front to handle whatever your life costs. All the bills that come through, wholesaling's quick. You can make the money now. It's funny because like tomorrow I'm going to be wholesaling something and I'm going to get paid quite a bit. And it's... <laughs> Doesn't take very long. It you know it takes like a week, right? Mm. Maybe two. So, so yeah, um, wholesaling can definitely make you money. So let's let's actually draw this out, right? So when it comes to a property, right? When it comes to a property, that's supposed to be a house, okay? Or you know, <laughs> that's a property, right? So we got we got four paths actually to make money from it, but I'm and I'm doing this just so that you understand where I'm coming from, and then I'm gonna drive it back to your life. So there's wholesaling, right? There's wholesaling and then there's flipping and then there's your buy and hold your rentals as we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then there's lending, which is the part that not a lot of people talk about because mm -hmm. not only am I wholesaling a deal tomorrow and I'm going to be making $7,500, right? FYI. So wholesaling $7,500, it, take, it takes a week or two weeks time frame, but in terms of the actual work, it takes three hours, you know, right. of like negotiating and talking back and forth. And we'll, we'll get into that. So, so um, not only am I wholesaling, right. Or whatever, all the way down there. Um, I'm also lending. So there's a, a deal. Mm. There's a deal where I'm going to be doing a hard money loan for a borrower. And when you lend, you get points and interest. So I'm going to be the one collecting the points and interest. The person borrowing it is going to be doing a flip. So they're going to be doing all of the hard work of hiring the contractors and hoping that it sells. And I'm just sitting there, my money in the deal, and it's working for me. And what's right. really cool is I'm using a self-directed IRA. So that's a retirement account, a self-directed IRA. I'm using that money to do the lending. And because I'm using a self-directed IRA and it's a Roth, I never have to pay any taxes on any of the gains, which is a pretty, mm. thing, right? So that that's, that's a whole different thing that, you know, you will learn about by being in the program. Right. But right now, since you are in the program, I'm going to be trying to go over with you the, your specific strategy, what you should focus on. All right. So now let's talk about real quick. So you got the property and let's say you wanted to do a rental. Well, there's multiple ways of doing it. So you could do it yourself, right? So you can do self or you can do a syndication. So where you do it yourself is what you imagine, right? When you do it yourself, you're, um, you, you own the property, you fix it up, you find the tenant, you rent it out, you handle the maintenance calls, all of that and you do the evictions when needed, whatever, right? You can also refinance and and cash out and do the whole burr thing if you want, right? So this is typically what people think of when they do think of rentals and passive income. Okay. Passive income. But another way you can do it is through syndication. And what a syndication is, is where here's a big property and you were saying multifamily, right? So these are all windows, right? So this is a big multifamily. Right. Everybody puts their money into the deal, okay? Everybody's putting money into the deal. And then there is an operator who does all of the work at the property. And then they pay you back based on the cash flow, <coughs> based on the cash flow, the refinance and all that kind of stuff. So this person does all of the work. All you did was you put your money in, right? Gotcha. All you did was you put your money into it. And the question is, where does this money come from? Maybe through wholesaling, right? right. And so you could wholesale and then you can put your money into a syndication where the operator is doing all of the work. This could be a hundred unit building. This could be whatever. Like I'm invested in a couple of whole, um, syndications like this. And mm. the one is 336 units. The other one is 670 units. Right. So if you think about it from that point of view, it's like, you're getting into something that you would never have any opportunity to get into in the past. Right. Like you would never buy yourself 
buy a 670 unit building. Right. But now through syndication, you can, and here you're getting your passive income, right? So that's all you ultimately want is your passive income and you get it month in and month out. Maybe it's a quarterly payment, maybe it's a monthly payment, but it's up to the syndicator. But also when the syndicator does a refinance, because your money is in the deal, you actually are part owner. You're not lending him money. Right. Not lending him or her money. You are actually an equity owner in the deal. And because you have equity, when they refinance and when they cash out, you get a big capital event. So mm. here's what's really cool. Just like your regular Burr where – Here's a property, right? And you put, let's say you bought you bought it and you fixed it up. You bought it for 100K and you fixed it up for 50K, <clears throat> okay? So you're all in for $150,000, right? Let's say this is a typical burr. And then when you're all done, the property is worth, let's say, let's go crazy. Let's, let's call it 300K, right? You're all in, you're all in for 150 and you, 300K is the ARV, the after repair value. Mm -hmm. when you refinance it, you get money back, right? And and maybe you get 150 back. Maybe you get 170 back. You get all your money back, right? right? And you still own the deal. You didn't sell the deal, right? You still own the deal. Well, same thing happens here. The building, is, you guys bought it for 20, uh, $20 million, right? But when you guys do the value add, when you raise rents, when you do all that kind of stuff, it's worth $30 million. Mm. They refinance all the same. And then they give you your money back. And you're still in the deal with no money in the deal. So that mm. happens even at this level. Right. Even at this level. Now, the difference is, the big difference is, when you did this deal, right, you might have used a hard money loan, a private money loan, you used credit cards, a line of credit, you might be, maybe did seller finance, maybe you did subject to, there's a lot of these kind of things that you did in order to come up with the 150. Gotcha. Here, this was your cash. Typically, uh, you're not leveraging money to put into a syndication, you are putting cash in. So in order to do cash, you wholesale. So that's the big difference. If you do smaller deals, stuff like this, you have a lot of sources for capital, right. a lot of, a lot of OPM, hard money, private money, credit cards, line of credit, all that kind of stuff. A lot of OPM here. You are the OPM for this mm. person, right? Right. Uh, you gotcha. are the OPM for that person. Yeah. So that, that's the big difference there. So, yeah, like that. yeah, but again, if you got it, then who cares, right? If you right. wholesale and you got it, then who cares? So, so you are the OPM for this person here, the syndicator. So that, that's the big difference between Burr and syndication of big apartment complex. Okay. So, so that's, that, that's the difference between these two. This is where you can use your use OPM. Mm -hmm. and this one, you are the OPM. Oop. Right. Yeah. So that's the big difference. Both have pluses and minuses. Here, even if you have a property manager, you have to manage the property manager in the Burr scenario. When you right. Do Here, you do nothing. You <laughs> do nothing. Like, like, right. and in a syndication, it's made up of uh, two parts. There's a, a GP. P and an LP, GPLP. GP stands for general partner. LP stands for limited partner. You um, are the limited partner. Limited. Limited in liability, but also limited in work. So you, if they, if the, the project gets sued, you're like, dude, I'm a limited partner. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Right? right. Here, if you get sued, it has a lot to do with you. Like, even right. though it's your LLC or whatever, like, it's still like, you got to deal with it. If the syndication gets sued and you're just an LP, you're like, nope, 
Paperwork says, I got nothing to do. No, no liability here. The general partner takes the hit. Right. Right. So you as a limited partner, you're limited in liability, but you're also limited in work. There is no expectation for you to do anything. And not only is there no expectation, you have no right to do anything. You you right. give up your rights. You you go, look, I trust the general partner. General partner will will do right by me. If the general partner thinks the door should be blue, then the door is going to be blue. Right. I, you ain't got no say in that, right? Here, you decided the door is blue, green, black, red, yellow, whatever, right? And so that see, you, so you're starting to see the differences. Got. Gotcha. But this is your like your later steps because right now what you want to do is you want to wholesale for some cash up front. Right. So now, uh, before I go into the next step, let's let's I'm going to open it up. What are you, what are your thoughts now that I've run through? All that I just ran through. What are my thoughts? Yes. What's opening up for you? I want you to say your thoughts because I want to capture your thoughts for the future you to watch this later. All right. Gotcha. So also, I want to know what you're thinking to see if we're on the right track. All right. Well, I was writing this down a little bit. So. So. Um. Yeah, like the syndication, like that really opened my eyes up to a lot because I'm one that I always thought like, yo, I don't like dealing with the headache of people, like with tenants and stuff. So that's why I always said multi-units so I could have like a property manager. But even now with the syndication, it's like, yo, I really don't have to worry about anything. So that is something that I want to scale to. So it's like that is something that I strive to do, um. But even even with the, the with the bird, like I, I I mean I would love to go in and and um like I would like to go in and um have my own stuff too because it's like I would like to hey yeah I want to make this door blue you know so it's like. Yeah, I want to do like different little things like that. So it was like, like even for like the whole, like my whole view on real estate is like I have uh something that I wanted, like I envision, and I want to be able to bring it to life, like almost like some art, you know. And I see that in real estate, but um the whole syndication thing, like I like that. I, I, you know what, I, 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 I knew I've heard of it, but it's like I never really thought it was as simple. Not that simple. I'm, I'm sure there's more steps to it, but like the way you broke it down, it was like, all right, this makes sense. This well, that's my art. In. That's my art. Right. Explaining things in such a simple right. way that everybody understands. That's why people like me as an educator mm -hmm. because I think yeah, it's make it simple. Right. So, yeah. One other thing that I want to talk to you real quick about, because you say things like, you know, I want to do multifamily. I don't want to deal with the property manager. And really what you're saying is you want passive income. Yes. Lending is another way of doing passive income. Because remember, right. I lent the money to the person who's doing the fix and flip. I get mm. paid back. I get passive income. I'm not doing any work. There's no property Actually, manager. Actually, that did stick out too. Cause I wrote it like with the IRA and I know we spoke about it in the past about the raw IRAs, how you don't get the, with the tax and stuff. And I was like, yo, like, and, and it just had my mind rolling. Like, all right, once I start getting these, like once I start getting these wholesale deals, like my, my first thought is I'm opening up IRAs just to be feeding it. I know it's a certain amount you have to feed it, but just to have it in place. So that is something that I wrote down. Like once I start getting it, as it, it, as I'm creating the capital, I'm also going to have like these little investment, like these savings accounts and stuff, like a Roth IRA and stuff. So, so I could do the lending, and I could be, you know, right, and have that in place to for it to make more money. So, right, it did stick out. Right. Well, luckily for you. I have done all of this, right? Yes. Every every single one of these things. And so I get to guide you on how you get to do it too. Right. So what, whenever you're ready, 
for that next step, it's as simple as hone. What now? <laughs> right. right. Uh, this, is, this is beautiful. I love it. Right. Right. So let's go into it. What now is you want it to wholesale for some quick cash. Right. And so right. like, like I, like I just mentioned, I'm making $7,500. Would $7,500 help you in your situation right now? Like if you oh, got man. paid. Yeah. Oh, de definitely. Right. So, so that is totally possible. So now let's talk about how it works. Obviously, you know how it works, but, but let me, let me draw it so that when you see it, a new question or a new idea, a new thought or something might happen. Okay. So let's say that's you. All right. So there you go. Typical wholesale deal. So what happens is this person is you, this is the buyer, and this is your seller. So all you're doing, obviously, is you're finding a person, you're getting it under contract for one price, and then you sell it over here for more, right? You yeah. tell this seller, hey, I like your house. I'll give you 100K for it. And they go, okay, good enough. And then you turn over here and you say to the guy, hey, it's 120. And if he says, okay, that means you just made 20K. Like I just made 7,500. You can make 20K in this scenario. Like yeah. uh, one of our friends we just talked about, Chris, earlier, right? He was this person and I was this person and who cares who the seller was, right? He made 70K. Mm. I paid him 70K. Mm. And was I mad? No. No. Because no, I got the property made... for the price I needed to get it at. Right. He made 70K. He made 70K. And and what's cool is it was like, oh, um, if it was like, if I was happy with the purchase price, uh, why didn't he just buy it, right? And he could have. But why didn't he? Because he didn't want to deal with the contractors. He didn't want mm -hmm. to have his money out there and and used for the next 12 months or whatever before he got it back. Um, and he may not have had the money to buy the property and pay for the rehab. Right. Maybe he didn't want to go through hard money and private money. And, you know, it's like, look, why he chose to not deal with it all, the, the number one reason, risk. There's risk when you buy a property. There's risk when you try to fix it up. There's risk every step of the way for months and months and months and months and months. Or, Chris, would you like to make $70,000 today? Zero risk. He said, I'll take that one. I'll take that. Yep. All right. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs> and look, his upside, he might have made. He might have made 100. But would you rather take 70,000 today or 100,000 eight months, 10 months from now? and maybe not get it like maybe there's uncertainty right, there, right? and uh, so he was just no like you know what man. not not going to take the risk not going to take yeah. the risk okay so now here's where this is you you get to make 20 grand okay and this is real world deal happens all day every day twice on sunday um so so really the reason why i'm only making 7500 is because i'm splitting the rest with another person so it was actually more 7500 was just my take and and gotcha. we'll talk about we'll talk about that too okay so the seller so there's a couple components you got to be able to find the seller you got to be able to find the buyer right you got to find the seller you got to find the buyer in my situation i let me write hone i found the buyer and the person right. that I shared the fee with, let's just call them they, they found the seller, right? And mm. so this this you was two people. Mm. I had the buyer, they had the seller. Gotcha. Right, right? And so we just take that and we split it. So it'd be 10 and 10. Gotcha. That's all it is. So, so why I share this with you is because I'm trying to break it down into a smaller part. Right. You. Because if you're brand new 
And you're just thinking like, oh man, I got to find sellers and I got to find buyers. I don't got buyers home. I don't got sellers home. Like if you only have one piece, we can find the other piece. Right. Right. You have one piece, we can find the other piece. I've even been a part of this. There's three people. Okay. And how that works is, uh, so there is the, okay. So this is the seller. Okay. This is the wholesaler who found the seller. Okay. Wholesaler <laughs> who found the seller. You got the wholesaler who found the buyer. Right. And then you got mm -hmm. the, and then you got the buyer. Okay. Right. And then it's like, okay, home. Who's the three? Right. So this was me. Right. This wholesaler who found the seller didn't know a buyer. They didn't right. even know a wholesaler who had a buyer. But mm. I honed knew. I honed knew the wholesaler who found the seller, and I honed who knew a wholesaler who found the buyer. Mm. So I just slid my way right in there, made a couple thousand dollars <laughs> because I knew a wholesaler on this side. I knew a wholesaler on that side. They didn't yeah, know each other. Is. Let's say let's say that this deal was a fifteen thousand dollar deal, five grand, five grand, five grand. Everybody was happy. Mm. The wholesaler who found the seller couldn't get the deal done. Couldn't find a wholesaler right. who found the buyer. Couldn't find a buyer. This person, they're like, "Hone, I got all these buyers, Hone, but I got no deals for them." They were struggling. Right. The wholesaler who found the buyer. There are wholesalers out there who have a ton of buyers. Their problem. And what a lot of people have problems with is finding sellers. Oh, and I got all these buyers. I got no sellers. I got no sellers. I can't find nobody. I can't lock up any contracts. I got no properties under contract. I got no inventory for them, Hone. Help me out. Do you have anything for sale, Hone? And I said, hold on. I remember, I remember this wholesaler who locked up this buyer or seller who doesn't have a buyer. So then I slipped in right what's opening up for you i want to stop there this was good nuggets right what's opening yeah. up for you that i mean it's it's plenty like of different outs basically like it's like it's definitely like it's, it's like a lot of connections like i feel as though like i'm just using you i'm just like you got a lot of different ways and it's like, it's, it's a lot of multiple ways you can approach a situation because it's times where people like will get stuck. Like, yeah, I got a buyer or I got a seller. And it's like, I can't sell this contract. I don't know who to sell it to. And it's like, it's multiple ways. Like, all right, we could divide this up. We could break it up. We could break this into pieces like a pie. I mean, yo, home, I got a piece of the pie for you. Can we get this done? You know what I'm saying? This is my cup. We could split it. What's up? What you got for me? So I think it, it it relieves a lot of like overthinking. Like just for me, it's like, all right, I don't have to think too much. Like we could just find different ways to find the answer type stuff. So it's like, yeah, I mean, because like my thought process is like just going through the whole process of the deal. Like I got to find the seller. I got to negotiate the seller. I got to, you know what I'm saying? Now I got to find a buyer, you know? And it's like, that could be a lot to think of when you're doing something alone. And it's like, but if you have the right resources, you're not alone. You just got to know how to negotiate with everything. Well, so, the, the beauty of what you did is you didn't have, the, you still don't have the resources. I don't. But you have me. Yes. Who has the resources. Exactly. Right? You have me who has the resources. Now, I, I got home. There you go. There you go. That's what you bought into, right? That's what you bought into. Yes. All right. So let's go, let's go through one more thing that I, I find interesting and that you might find interesting. Okay. So let's say you were still in that mindset, like I got to do everything or whatever. I got to do right. all the pieces, whatever. Okay. 
Okay, so you're still in the middle. You want to find this buyer, but you don't know who he is, where where he is, whatever, right? right? And you happen to be able to find that seller, okay? And through your charm and wisdom, you've been able to negotiate a really good price, right? But we still didn't find that buyer. Still didn't find the right. buyer. If it's a really good deal, you can use OPM. Private money, hard money, credit cards, lines of credit, whatever. We could even negotiate with the seller to do subject to or seller finance, right? Mm. We're using some kind of OPM. So you had every intention of wholesaling. Right. But you ended up buying it. Okay. Mm. So now right. you go, all right, Hone. So uh, I wanted the quick money. So what's up with this, us buying this, right? I go, here we go. So once you buy the thing, maybe... You do a little cleanup. So you spend a little bit of money and you do a little cleanup. You take out the trash. Maybe you paint. Maybe you vacuum. Maybe something, right? You clean it up just mm -hmm. a little bit and you throw it up on the MLS, the open market, right? And we put it on the open market. We have a real estate agent listed. And now you have all the buyers, all the buyers mm. in the market now seeing your property. So now we call that a double close wholesale. It's a double close yeah. because you closed on it, you bought it, right. bought it, and when right. you sell it later on the MLS, that's a second close. Right. You got a double close wholesale, and again, you use all the OPM to buy the thing, and it's a short period of time because then you find the buyer, and the buyer's on the market, and there's a bigger pool, and yeah. there's an argument that when you do it that way, you actually make more money because you got more buyers with the potential of paying more money. Right. So, gotcha. So double close wholesale is another way. Mm. See, I, I I never thought of it like that either. All right. Then like, what, I yeah. got one more for you. I got one more for you. Let's go, baby. I got one more for you. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This is listed on the MLS. Mm. You make an offer for whatever. It's on the MLS. You tell a real estate agent, hey. Make an offer on that property for $80,000. And then this mm. person accepts it. And then you turn around and you find the buyer. And remember, all you did was make an offer, okay? Oops. Right. All you did was make an offer that got accepted, which means you're under contract agreement of sale, right? You're under right. contract agreement of sale. And let's say it's for $80,000. Cool. Now you go find the buyer. You say, hey, do you want this for $90,000? They say, yes. Cool. They actually go to closing and they buy it off of the MLS and you made 10. Mm. So you found it on the MLS and you found a buyer. Here, you found a seller and you sold it on the MLS. All right. So question with that, the second scenario. <clears throat> yep. So since I put the offer in, Yep. This other guy can't jump in and just buy it off the MLS for my offer. They they shouldn't be able to. Uh, you have this agreement signed right. and, and locked in, and you can right, gotcha. file a Liz pendants, and you can do all kinds of stuff. Right. Also, the agent, the listing agent, right? There's a listing mm -hmm. agent. They're gonna be like, yeah, it's off market. You know, it's you know, it's under contract. Sorry. If if gotcha. anything, if it falls through, then whatever. I got you. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, this is some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So then, so uh, hold up, back, back. I'm sorry. Back. So would I would I sign that AOS the same way I would do a regular contract if it was like a regular seller that wasn't on the MLS? You would. So the agreement of sale. You treat this exactly the same way as a uh, uh, a regular wholesale. Got you. Got you. All right. I ain't know if it was different. Being as though it's in, on the MLS and stuff. There, so. there, there's a nuance. There's a nuance yeah. that we'll go over in the course. Gotcha. Uh, this this video might be seen by other people who are considering joining the program. So if like they're like, oh, I got all the information already. No, you <laughs> didn't. <laughs> there's more, there's more to it. There's more to learn, folks. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, your job. Just to be a student, 
and soak all this in. This is fascinating, isn't it? Is it, it is, is fascinating? Right? It is. There's all, all this stuff. You thought you were like, I know how to wholesale. Okay. But did you know this? Did, uh, did you know that? Did you know, did you know this? Did you know this? Like it's there's a lot. There's, right. there's a good bit. There's a good bit. And even if once you know all of this, they're still executing on all of it. What's the paperwork, Hone? Who else do I need? Do I need a title company? Ooh. Do I need an attorney? Do I need the the it's it's still mm. still lots to learn, but luckily the program provides all that, right? Okay. Provides provides all that. The uh so for for anybody watching so far, if, if you guys have been following along so far, this is truth about <laughs> about REI that stands for real estate investing truth about REI.com truth about real estate investing.com I, I I created truth about real estate investing because there's too much false information out there <clears throat> it, it conflicts it's confusing people just get stuck they don't know what to do they do nothing so I give you the truth I give you the truth about how to do deals I show you how it's done. I I show you how it's done step by step, piece by piece, company by company. And also I'm doing it. I'm still doing it. And, right. and I show you guys like, look, look at what I'm doing right <laughs> now today and how I did it. Right. So you guys get to benefit from all of that. Now let's keep on going. You're not done. One more thing. <laughs> One more thing, okay? I don't want to be done. What you mean? <clears throat> right, right. You're getting yeah. all this knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So here's you, and you're like, how do I draw this? Here's like binoculars. Okay. This is terrible. Okay. So you're like, hold, I need to find these sellers. And maybe you don't find them on the MLS. You wanted to do some door knocking, right? That's what you said to me on our talk before this call. You maybe wanted to do some door knocking in an area. So what you could do is you could literally door knock or you could be a little smarter, a little smarter, and you can use something like Deal Machine. Deal Machine is an, uh, an app, right? And if you go to dealmachine.com slash, oops, so dealmachine.com slash Hone Zone, you'll get to access their information. I think you get seven days for free and you get uh, 50 mailers or whatever. But like, if you're really aggressive, you got seven days for free to get the information of the neighborhood you're trying to knock and you can figure out who's who versus like, okay, here's a door. Let me knock on it. I don't know who's going to open it versus, you know, if this is an owner occupied house or a non-owner occupied house, you know, if they're behind on their taxes. You know, if they're behind on their mortgage. You know, if there's a tenant in there, you know, this, you know, that, da, 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 da. And that information is in there so that you're not just cold knocking, mm. right? How powerful is that? If you know it's <laughs> owner-occupied, when you knock on the door, you go, hey, Mr. Smith. They're like, do we know each other? We don't know each other yet, but we will because I'm going to be buying this house. It's like, oh, okay, right? And so you will have inside information because – of the information you pull from Deal Machine. And again, if you go on dealmachine.com slash hone zone, you'll get seven yeah. days free and you'll get 50 mailers. Okay, so you'll get 50 mailers for free as well. So if you do want to mail and not just door knock, you can get 50 of them for free, print it, mail it for you. Um, there's also a cool little app where if you're, if you're door knocking and you're walking through the neighborhood, there's like a breadcrumb feature. It'll it'll show which blocks you walked, right? Mm. And then not only that, if like 10 days pass or 20 days pass or 30 days pass or whatever, the breadcrumbs will change colors. So you'll know if you walk this before and you'll also know when. So Is like, that on deal machine? Yeah. It, and then oh, uh. and then here, here's another cool part. They got AI features. So if you don't know what to say to the seller, it'll come up with a script for you. It'll, mm. it'll tell you all the things. Like they, they built in an AI to help show you. Look at this, John. 
<laughs> you got yo, I'm about to go out there now, man. <laughs> yo, and here's what's cool. You can do it across the country. Oh man. You can do it across the country. You can see what what mortgage size they have on the property and also what the property value is. And so you can compare those two to see if you got equity. Uh, oh, I'm going to need some buyers about next week, man. You get them? <laughs> you, you, yo, here's my favorite thing in the world right here. You let me know, baby. You let me know. <laughs> you see that? That says hone. You let me know right there. Oh, man. We'll do this all day. All day I'm long. Man. Oh, man. How, how how did you enjoy your one on one? Oh man, I love it, man. <laughs> this is listen, man. I, with the right guidance, man, it, it's is only you can only fail with a lack of effort or a lack of just work. I mean, I, I've been seeing a lot of stuff like what people say, like. Um, the best way to do things like to be successful is like, like what's the best advice? Somebody was asking, like, what's the best advice? He's like, get a mentor, get somebody that knows their stuff and learn from them. Like, and it's like, it's so much. Cause it's like, we try to think we could learn it all on ourselves and yeah, maybe we could get a lot, but it's like, why not do it? Why not reach out to somebody who's actually done it and has success time and time again. So it's like, just this little one-on-one -on -one, I grabbed so much information it's like it got me wanting to just go out there because it's like I, I I have goals and the mission that I'm on and, and I feel as though with this one conversation it like just took me 20 steps ahead of what I would have been if I would have just not done it yeah I just realized my handwriting so bad this looks like a boat I I I uh I made it to too too tight. Here we go. There you go. Now it looks right. <laughs> about about. I closed the U to make it look like a about. Truth about. All right. Yo, this Truth is amazing, right? man. Listen, man. I'm locked in. I'm locked in on this this thing. Oh man. All right. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm ready to work, bro. <laughs> you don't understand. I'm ready to work. All right. Well, hey. It's on you now. I gave I gave yeah, I gave sure. it to you. Let's go. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, for the rest of you guys, if you guys are interested, truth about REI. There you go. Oh, hey, don't don't waste some time, man. Get on it. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Today. All right. All right. That's the end of the recording. See you guys in the next video.